Many rotating equipment manufacturers seat a bearing in the end wall of a bearing standard and use the standard cover to hold the bearing in place. This design method is definitely simple and low cost and it works when the air temperature surrounding the bearing standard is ambient. There are applications for which this clamping design is not very effective and even inappropriate. For applications where the wall of the standard is heated by exposure to hot steam escaping from shaft seals or is exposed to the radiant heat from an adjacent hot turbine, the standard wall grows due to thermal expansion. While the bearing inside is cooled with lube oil in the neighborhood of 130 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, the external heating may cause the temperature of the standard wall to increase to 250 degrees. For a fit diameter of 32 inches and a temperature differential of 100 degrees, a gap of 20 thousandths of an inch develops and the bearing gets quite loose in the fit, even if clamped with a slight interference when installed cold. Looseness of bearings contributes greatly to increased rotor and bearing vibrations, as well as fretting of the bearing seat, which is why this design is considered to be inappropriate for hot steam turbine applications. The difference in thermal expansion was solved by GE engineers back in the 1930s. Bearings were redesigned to incorporate an integral strong back. This design has the top half bolted tightly to the horizontal joint of the lower standard. With this design, the standard cover can get hot and expand, but the bearing remains tightly fastened. By the 1940s, this design became a standard feature of all GE turbines. This design of a bearing top half with ears and hold down bolts into the horizontal joint is definitely more expensive than fitting a round bearing into a hole in a wall, but the long-term benefits of vibration control for lightweight, high-speed, high-powered density turbine rotors cannot be matched in any other way.